My name is Carrie. This is my buddy here, Lily. She's very sleepy. Initially, in our garage, we set up a spot for stray cats to come and eat. And we put like cameras in there so we could watch it because sometimes it's funny to see all these different animals come in. And we started to see a lot of skunks. And I was like, man, they just have so much personality and they're so funny to watch. You know, I've heard that people could own skunks as pets. So I was like, cool, let's check it out. I looked into it and it was a process. It took about eight months of getting all the legal stuff that needed to be done, contacting the licensed breeder. We had a game warden come out and inspect my property and everything it's for real just to have this little thing because the issue is so the same qualifications you have for her you'd have for like a tiger it's much less threat level but it's just the same license right we got her like four weeks old and when we got her she was almost a wild animal she had not been like socialized or anything she was terrified of us she wouldn't come out of like her corner she would like pee and poo and eat and everything in that same spot wouldn't move but week after week of us just trying to play with her and now she's about a year and she gets upset if we move her out of our lap now she really just hates baths and other than that she is the most agreeable loyal little creature that's usually question number one for sure it slips your mind when you realize that she doesn't have one so the breeders in order to be right with the law have to legally at about the two or three week mark get them surgically descented it's like non-invasive there's no stitches or anything they don't like cut open or anything they do it under anesthesia you know within hours they're good to go i wanted to make sure that was felt okay with me ethically when she's you know mad at you she'll stick her butt at you and, and let you know i don't know if she knows that it's gone but she'll definitely threaten with the booty scoots and point at your direction for sure i don't doubt there's probably a hundred times she's attempted to spray me but yeah no scent thankfully She's very, very good behaviorally. She uses the litter boxes super, super easy. All you gotta do is they're gonna use the bathroom once when they're a baby, or you put it in a litter box. And after that point, they know, okay, got it. And that was it. We were almost suspect. Like we were afraid to, you know, let her mosey out too much. Cause we're like, it can't be that easy, but it was very, very few issues ever. She'll even let herself out of the bed, use the ba bathroom, get back into the bed with us. Yeah, it's really incredible. Very, very smart creatures. I always was under the assumption that she wanted to be shut inside in the room at night because she doesn't like when the cats come in here and bother her. But she would like scratch at the door. After a couple of months, we just left the door open and we're like, well, maybe she wants to come out. And now she sleeps in bed with, with me. Under the covers, loves to sleep with her on the couch. Like she'll crawl inside your hoodie or in your robe or whatever, wants to just be as tight as possible. You can hold her like a baby. It's unreal. She likes to uh, basically just have her head covered up. As long as her head's covered up, she'll just relax and be still because she thinks she's safe. <laughs> yeah, so See, there she goes. She just wants to find a good spot and then she's she's good to go. The diet is uh, something that's actually pretty fun because she eats almost entirely fruits and vegetables, right? It's really neat because that's those are things, you know, that we can eat and we can snack on. So if we get a salad, we're like, here, you want some cucumbers or whatever? And she goes crazy. She's not super picky though, thankfully. So even if she's, oh, <laughs> she's waking up a little. Even if she's not feeling, um, oh baby. Someday she'll be like, nah, broccoli's not it for me. Like she's a little picky, but she's got a good enough spread like carrots, snap peas, blueberries, all that good stuff. The better their diet usually the better the color of their white people ask me a lot about like how do you keep her coat so clean or why does she look that way uh, that's just because the ones you usually see are not necessarily eating you know the greatest things because they do eat bugs she loves bugs we had a wasp problem once in my house and i was like running her around and she was just snapping them up we went through uh, at least 100 wasps it was crazy it's harder to find something she won't eat bananas hates them for some reason she'll eat like a, a dead bug on the ground before she eats a banana. She's not crazy about mushrooms. And you know, I've talked to other skunk owners and they say that like, oh yeah, I have a skunk that loves mushrooms and one that hates them. So it's all super individual based on their personalities, which I find kind of fun. Cause you know, we have dogs, we have cats and it's like, here's your boring dry kibble that you get three times a day or whatever, twice a day. Whereas with Lily, it's like, oh man, what can we, you know, cook up? Like we'll find like weird exotic fruits and be like, oh man, let's see if the weasel, the skunk will eat this, right? But we call her weasel all the time when she's being bad. She eats way cheaper than the other animals by miles. In terms of like her overall care, um, similar to the cat, you got the litter box. We trim her nails, give her a bath once a month. Skunk nails are not sharp. They're very dull because they're for digging. So even if they run a little long, super dull, uh, the only thing that you notice is that they kind of clack on the tile a little bit. And <laughs> so she's a little bit of a tap dancer. In terms of like, like how can you screw it up? Tons of room for error. You're not gonna be like, oh my God, I've ruined this animal's life because I fed her at three as opposed to one. She, you know, very, very easy pets to own, uh, which was a surprise. They told me, 
Skunks don't climb. If you put it up high, it's out of reach. They're not climbers. But th what they didn't say is that skunks are so smart that if they see something do something, they'll teach themselves to replicate it. So she watches the cats climb all day, every day, and she'll tail after them and she'll try and she'll fall and then she'll try and she'll fall. And, and then she'll figure out, well, if I climb on this first and then this and then the, and she'll piece it together eventually. And now she climbs on everything. So we have to treat her like a cat in that regard. I think she was a couple months old. The cat was a couple months old and they were running around, knocking stuff over in the kitchen, being crazy. So I put up a baby gate. She was on one side, like trying to get up and he was on the other side and she kind of like clawed up to the top and he grabbed her hands and yanked her over. And it, it is the craziest thing to watch. And then they just scatter off as fast as they could. And I was like, are you kidding me, man? Like, what am I supposed to do at this point? Exercise is an interesting topic because they do get fat very easily. Same thing with raccoons, they balloon very easily. So if you see a lot of domestic skunks and raccoons on social media or whatever, they're usually pretty chonky, right? So we like measure her food out, we weigh everything. She eats very particularly. She's a little pear shaped, but that, you know, that's okay. I do take her on walks more so just for fun though, because she is not a great walker. She's very slow. She wants to smell every piece of grass she passes. She has like a little uh, leash and collar. I put on her made for a cat and she, she doesn't even really notice it. She moves so slow that I just pick her up on my hands if I need to. But I think it puts other people at ease when you when they see the beast is contained, you know what I mean? So yeah, thankfully with the right diet and being very, very careful about that, it, it the exercise becomes less of an issue. Oh, and, and also one big thing is they don't hibernate at the end of the year, but they go into what's called torpor which is why she's so tired right now, which is where their body temperature and their metabolism drops. So like for any time, maybe they got a little chunky this past year. Once that cycle ends, you can really start back at baseline because their metabolism's so low. So you can get them on a better diet next year. So every time that comes around, if you've maybe been a little generous with your snacks or something like that, it's very easy to adjust the next year around. Whereas like if your cat's fat, your cat's fat, like good luck with that. And I think that that solves that, that exercise issue quite a bit as well. Like she's a bit on the husky side right now, but she, uh, she'll probably slim up a, a, a pound or something, you know, coming into like January, February. Some people think we're crazy. Uh, sometimes I, I think we're a little crazy too, but honestly, our cats are way worse. When it comes to people's reaction to having a skunk as a pet, it's very mixed. It helps a ton to have a TikTok where I can be like, huh, please, she's a big deal, right? But ultimately I've been pretty surprised that most people, like if I'm walking her and somebody's walking their dog, they'll be like, no way, is that a, is that really a skunk? Or, you know, they'll have questions. They won't come running up to us for sure, like they would with a cute puppy maybe, but they'll ask questions from afar. Um, and once I'm like, oh, she's she can't spray, she's unarmed, whatever, I have a, like carrying sack whenever I go to like the pet store or the vet, like a little satchel that she like just sits in and rides and she'll like poke her head out. And I believe this mom thought she was a cat. And this little girl was like, can I hold her? And I was like, yeah, sure. And she just reached in there and snatched her out and like went to go show her mom. And then her mom, I heard her mom say, ah! <laughs> well, you know, it, it's always a big laugh after that. And once people know and you kind of explain, then they're like, oh, can I touch her? This might be my only time to say I can I pet someone's skunk or hold a skunk. Oh, look what I got for you. See, she just, she just sits like this, <laughs> you just hold her. She just will hold it in her little hands and eat it. That's actually a fun fact we didn't talk about Their Skunks are actually almost completely blind. So they're nocturnal. They can only really see a few feet in front of them. And what they can see is mostly shapes, blur, stuff like that. As a result, like sometimes if you hold like a blueberry, for instance, between your fingers and you're like, here you go, she'll miss the blueberry because she just can't see. And her teeth are no joke. So she's the least aggressive pet on the face of humanity for like will never bite, scratch, or anything like that she'll just run away she's a prey animal so they just anytime they're scared they she runs which is nice right you don't have to worry about a fight a fighting a dog or anything but um when she does get you with her teeth they, it doesn't feel good it's happened a couple times see her little feetsies she'll do this with anybody as long as she's eating i'll just hand her off and that's why people are like i can't believe what's going on right now like I, this is so surreal and i'm like well it's only surreal because people have the same level of fear for skunks as they do for like sharks right they're like run get away run you know like it's terrifying like it's like the scariest creature on earth but in actuality they're just you know they're same thing with possums they're actually like super docile really kind smart creatures gunks are so smart way too smart it's a problem sometimes she's so smart i have to 
put child safety locks on everything. Yeah, you gotta be careful about leaving a door open. She can open cabinets, she can open bags sometimes, like can't leave the pantry open or she'll, she's a Fruit Loop goblin. She will go in there and dig out Fruit Loops. Her sniffer is incredible because she uh, can't see very well. If you let her into a room and somebody's got like snacks in their purse or something, she'll find them. It'll only take a minute. She'll find it so fast. So sometimes when my kid sneaks like a Pop-Tart, I'm like, I know you. You ate a snack in here. I'm like, don't make me bring Lily in here. She's like, no, no, don't do that. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having us. Uh, this is Lily. Hopefully um, everyone out there gets a little bit better idea on, you know, what skunks are and what they're capable of. You know, maybe if, if just one person wants a pet skunk and this is enough to put them over the edge, that would that would be all right. So I'd, uh, you know, good luck if you are, because it is a, it is a journey.